first of all, let's get it straight exactly what the changes to this policies are. Chris, we have a full screen, but maybe you can explain to us what exactly Dix is making changes to today. Sure thing, and uh, thank you for having me. So, uh, first point is that they will no longer be selling assault-style rifles. Um, that is something that uh, they had removed out of their Dick stores back in 2012, but they continued to sell them up until today in their 35 field and stream stores, uh, which are now being removed from those stores at this point. And as you referenced, uh, they will no longer sell firearms to anyone under 21 years of age and no longer sell high capacity magazines. So those are the, the general statements today um, coming out of Dick Sporting Goods. Uh, I guess the point I would make is when we think about the hunting segment for Dick Sporting Goods, while they don't break out the specific size, we believe that's roughly 10% of revenues. And hunting as a category has been declining all through 2017. So it's off a much smaller base at this point. And again, we're really talking about 35 field and stream stores. And I guess the somewhat unknown is really uh, the individuals who are buying or have been purchasing guns uh, under 21 years of age, uh, what impact that'll have. But uh, we'd probably say it's probably not, not that material, but certainly something we'll be watching. Exactly. And uh, ethically and morally, there probably will be a big impact, not to mention the knock-on impact on corporate America. I do want to read a quote from Ed Stack, the CEO and chairman. He says, the whole hunting business is an important part of our business, and we know there is going to be backlash on this, but we're willing to accept that. Backlash from whom, do you imagine, Chris? Uh, so I guess I would say that's probably going to be from uh, individuals who have purchased hunting guns and ammunition products from in the past uh, that potentially uh, would have gone to them for their purchasing needs, might look at this slight, uh, in a negative way and decide to go to one of their competitions for, for their needs. So that's certainly possible. Um, and something we'll have to watch. But I'm sure that's the reference that, that he's making in that statement. Now, given that there hasn't been a negative reaction in the stock price, may this, you know, impress upon other retailers that they need to do the same, that obviously the administration and Congress is not taking action on under 21s buying, being able to buy assault-style rifles and other guns and ammunition, and that maybe it's incumbent upon leaders in corporate America to do that instead? So that's always uh, hard to determine in, in that regard, I guess, from, from our perspective and looking at the stock and when we think about this category and its impact, um, again, we're probably going to say it's probably not that material. It's been a declining category. I would also say maybe one of the silver linings in all this is some might walk away feeling like, maybe to your point, that um, applauding Dix in a sense for taking the step to, to do what they're doing. And the result, some might argue, well, that's, that's great. Uh, maybe I'll decide to go to Dick's Sporting Goods to buy more of my uh, sporting goods product because they're actually stepping out and, and making a bold move like this. So that's possibly also something that's undetermined in terms of the ultimate impact, but that might also be refl reflected in, in a little bit in the stock today as well. Yeah, Chris, I mean, the stock is at $32.10. You've got a neutral rating. Your 12-month price target is $28. Uh, what's behind that call? So part of the observation around that is, at the end of the day, Dick Sporting Goods is in a uh, very competitive um, segment of the industry, that being sporting goods. Uh, they've seen a lot of challenges within their business and across uh, certain categories of their business. Um, until we start to get some sense that there is uh, a little more rationality with regards to the pricing environment, stronger underlying product trends, um, and the rate of reinvestment into their business, which is negatively impacting margins, starts to subside a little bit, we might take a, a fresher view. But at that, that's part of the reason why we're neutral at this point um, in the stock. Chris, can I ask you who are exactly Dick's competitors in this particular field? Is it a lot of individual and independent store owners? And is there as much of you know, a, you know, a, a, a pressure on them to take these kinds of steps? Or will this just benefit them? So I would say uh, some of their larger um, competitors are going to be Academy Sports and Outdoor, uh, which is based in Texas. Um, the other ones will probably be Bass Pro and Cabela's, which have recently merged together. 
those are probably some of the bigger ones. Um, you have had a lot of consolidation recently in the industry. Um, as we all know, Sports Authority exited the sporting goods market. Uh, Gander Mountain certainly had their challenges as well. So there's certainly been some players that have had some difficulty, but the larger ones are probably going to be Academy, uh, Bass Pro, and Cabela's. And uh, we'll see what happens. Certainly um, in some of those trading areas and markets where there's an Academy store nearby that have not changed their policy, um, could they recapture some of that business? It's, it's certainly possible.